Testing, one, two, one, two, and a trois, et un cent. All right, we're live. Welcome back to VR Essentials, guys, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. And today's video is very exciting because we're going to be talking about some more information about the Virtual Aero, which was released well, a few days ago. And, you know, very exciting. But some information I feel was missing from yesterday's video so let's transition over to the other screen but before we do that guys we're almost 10,000 subscribers thank you for your love keep clicking the like button and the reshare button on all your social media so that the more subscribers we have of course i can do all the reviews of all these various different vr headsets and do plenty more giveaways of games and vr apps to give away to you all right let's transition over now and talk about what's going on today with the virtual Arrow. So where's my uh, trans? <laughs> Here it is. Transition button. Uh, so basically, what we're going to do is the first thing that you guys need to realize is that for the virtual arrow, it is compatible with Steam VR tracking. Now, for those who are not, uh, you know, uh, familiar with the Steam, Steam is basically the world's biggest platform uh, when it comes to basically having all the various different uh you know vr applications and games and all these kind of things uh you know it's got hundreds and hundreds of different vr titles so do go and check it out you know if you're not familiar with it uh, but back to uh the virtual so basically it is compatible with steam vr tracking now what this basically means is there are some instructions on the website to you know um, to tell you how to install it and all these kind of different things but basically it means that first of all it is not um, you know, a standalone VR headset. I repeat, it is not a standalone VR headset. So it means that you do need to hook it up to a PC in order for it to work. And then the other thing is, it is not an all-in-one PC VR headset, which means, unlike the HP Reverb G2, you do not need base stations for this. This will just run directly from your PC, just like a monitor, and the tracking of the controllers of these guys will not require any specific base stations to put on the walls or anything like that. Now, there are pros and cons to this, of course. Having base stations means that you can have the tracking when you put your hands behind and all these kind of different things comparing to maybe, uh, you know, using tracking with the Windows Mixed Reality um, software, even though the tracking is very good, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying there are some pros and cons. The cons, of course, is you have to install them, you have to put them up, you have to make sure you have the stands or whatever you have, and then you have to go and pair everything in, in, in the computer. So it can be quite daunting for people who especially are new to VR and who, you know, may take some time to getting used to, to doing all these various different setup compared to using something like this, uh, which basically means plug and play, done. You just walk around your headset, uh, your room, your space, and it's done in two seconds. There's nothing to uh, to fit around with. So there are pros, there are cons. Some people like one and then other people prefer the other. So I don't, I'm not a big fan of base stations, but that's just my personal take. It doesn't mean that it's not good at all. It is very good technology still. Um, so let's just transition back also uh, to the screen. Okay, here we go. So the other thing is it, that it, is that it also means that these uh, the headset, now it is a whopping, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, 2,000 US dollars. Uh, you know, it, it is 2,000 US dollars. So, or 2,000 euros, guys. So do, do bear that in mind. It's 3,000 US dollars plus plus, plus VAT uh, with the controllers that would come with the actual headset itself. So do be mindful that I personally don't feel that the controllers that come with the actual Varsho are that great. And I'm going to show you why. I, it, the headset, because it can pair with the Steam VR, also means that it's compatible with the Valve Index controllers, which are a world-class uh, controllers. Because basically, if you look at here, it has specific sensors on the controllers, which enable you to really feel uh, like you're moving every single finger individually uh, just by moving your fingers without having to necessarily press any specific buttons, which this provides much more immersion uh, when you are in VR, when you're handling various different objects, driving a car, uh, if you're doing training for enterprise, uh, if you're flying a jet, you know, all these kind of different things or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter, holding a weapon and all these things. So, 
it's very important for you guys to understand that you can get the valve index uh you know controllers to work with the Valjo Aero. Um, you know, and I do highly recommend that if you're going to spend an extra thousand euros or US dollars to get the valve index, if you can, because they're quite hard to get now, to be honest. Um, but, and also the valve index will be releasing a new headset next year. So, you know, it's possible again, uh, we did talk about in the video, uh, yesterday, whether you should get the Valjo Aero or whether you should just get an HP Reverb G2 uh, or you should just wait until 2022. And I told you guys, personally speaking, for the price and the specs and all these kind of things that I understand. I, I'm a big fan of Valjo. Don't get me wrong. I love what they're doing. I'm just saying that for the price, the technology, what they're offering is far too expensive in my regards. Um, you know, I would just get an HP Reverb G2 to be very honest with you or a Valve Index if you still want to get one even though they are going to release it a new one next year so maybe even wait until next year now the other uh, thing that I wanted to talk about in today's video about the Valjo Aero which I felt was quite concerning um, and I think this is you know I'm, I love Valjo I love the products of course if they send me a headset I'll be super happy these guys train astronauts and all these kind of people they work with NASA they are big guns these people however there are some things I feel personally as you know on our channel uh, I'm very straightforward very black and white and I tell you how it is uh, we're one of the only channels that is so transparent about everything in VR so um, so you know this is something that's a bit concerning to me and I thought I would have to mention it to you just so that you're aware of the information uh, nothing against Valjo I love what they do um, so let's just transition over again and let's just go to the Upload VR's uh, video. Now there is an air cooling system in the Valjo Aero, which basically enables to cool your face as you're playing. And let's just uh, see what these guys were talking about. That sounds like a fan brushing up against the surface. Tracking wise, the device so you can clearly hear, let, let me just play it again for you and then maybe you can up the volume on your on your phone if you don't get to hear it. Move your head and hear what sounds like a fan brushing up against the surface. Tracking wise, the device... Now, I don't know if this is something that is super concerning or not or whether it breaks the immersion uh, when you're in actual VR itself. I'm just trying to get to the transition of my OBS. Give me a minute. Here we go. So I don't know whether this is something that is concerning uh, when you're actually immersed in virtual reality itself, but there is the fan noise that is very clear um, from the microphone, you know, that Upload VR did in the recording of the video that you can hear. You can clearly hear the fan. So Again, take it with a pinch of salt, but I don't know whether this is something that is, um, you know, going to break the immersion whilst you're in VR uh, or not. Because remember, there is a headphone jack you can plug into the VR headset to put these kind of headphones on your face, even though maybe the headband will come. I don't know whether it, I don't know, um, you know, it gets in the way or not. But I'm just saying you can put your, your earbuds in your ears, if not, if you can't wear these, um, you know, so perhaps it won't break the immersion. But I don't know. The fact is you can hear it and it may also produce, uh, you know, with noise comes vibration, right? So it's possible you, you, you may feel a tiny bit of vibration with the noise coming. I don't know. I have asked Vajo to send us the headset so it could confirm or deny this, but there is clearly the sound of the actual headset itself. And then finally, the other thing I would like to bring to attention, which I also did in yesterday's video, is the weight of the headset. Um, guys, if we just go back to the, uh, I, let me just transition over once more. Okay, and then let's go to the uh, ghost. Okay, there we go. Let me go to my friend's uh, blog. So this is the thing that concerns me a little bit about the actual uh, headset itself is the weight of the headset. So the weight currently as it stands on its own is 487 grams, which isn't that much of a bigger deal. Okay. But with the head strap, it's an extra 230 grams. So let me go to my calculator. So uh, what is it? 487 plus 230 grams 
Guys, that is 717 grams on your head. Now, the weight of the Oculus Quest 2 is, in grams, is 500 grams, okay? Uh, the Oculus Quest 1 was 571 grams. Now, I can tell you, um, first of all, and, and sorry, HP Reverb G2, Is 550 grams now let me tell you something about this that I feel is extremely important for you to to be aware of okay the oculus quest one when I had it before it was way heavy on my head after one hour I could really feel my shoulders and my back straining especially after a week of use or two weeks of use every single day VR and moving my head and all this like in Population 1 or all these shooter games and all these kind of things where you're moving a lot, or even the fitness, the VR fitness kind of stuff, and you're, whoo, you know, in Racket NX or O-Shape, you know, all this kind of stuff. I could really feel my neck starting to crack, like, like, like crackling kind of noises, and my back hurting a bit. And these are 500 grams headsets. Now, you're going to be wearing a 700 gram headset, more than 700 gram headset on your, on your head. That's almost a kilo worth of weight. That is not healthy, guys. You need to be aware of that. So if you're going to buy this kind of headset that's quite heavy to put on your head, just be very cautious. I would, if I were you, just maybe use it for half an hour, 45 minutes every day or one hour every two, three days, not two hours every single day because it can be... And now I'm talking about the virtual arrow on its own, guys. I'm talking about every headset. Every headset that is 500 grams or above, I really do not recommend you wearing it for hours on end every single day. It's going to be unhealthy for your back and your shoulders and especially your neck bones. It's You're going to start to feel it. You can get injuries. So do be very cautious. Be safe when you're in VR. Okay, guys, this is really what I wanted to talk about to you today, but it's very exciting. Virtual have released the world's best prosumer VR headset. I really would love to be able to try it. I hear how, how clear it is inside, but for the price, I think the HP Reverb G2 is more than enough if you want an amazing experience in VR and you can't wait until 2022 for the new headset that will be released then. So guys, I'll see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching and remember to share, like and enable the bell after you subscribe. Bye guys, good to see you again. Ciao.